Hello friends, hi, how are we today? I hope we are all doing well. I am coming at you today with something a little bit different. Um, I did a poll on my Instagram, Canada Planner Girl, um, about what people would like to see on my channel if I brought you something different. And the overwhelming response was cooking. And right now we've got a very happy baby who's dancing in the background. Um, so we are just going to get started. This is a longer video. Um, and a very different video for me. He's not choking, I promise you, that's his happy noise. Um, so uh, before we begin, I thought I would just get started with the items that you needed. Um, so it's a four, it's a four, uh, what's the word? Four ingredient bread, and it's minimal to no uh, kneading. So you do need some measuring implements. Um, you need some teaspoons if you have them and then a measuring cup and I always recommend a flat one that you can flatten off the top because you really want to get that particular flour estimate pretty accurate. You just need some plain old table salt, uh, you need some yeast and you can get packets or you can get the, um, in a jar and one packet equals two teaspoons and one quarter of a teaspoon of just uh, yeast from a jar, it's the exact same, and I prefer Fleischmann's, I just, I like the way the yeast cooks. You need a bowl, you actually need two bowls, but for this part you only need one. You need a measuring cup, and of course you need flour. I have bread flour, however, I also use um, all-purpose flour for this recipe when I can't find bread flour, and trust me, I couldn't at the beginning of the whole pandemic. Um, so I just used all-purpose flour, and what that ended up giving me was a little of a, uh, a bit more of a springier bread. Um, it had a bit of a better rise to it um, and a flakier crust, but this is more like sandwich-style bread. So uh, it really depends on what you want, and um, I guess we will just get going. Um, and again, bear with me. This is the first video like this I've ever made. I am very, very... <clears throat> excited but also very very nervous this is a like totally different thing for me <laughs> so okay okay so uh we're here on my counter and the first thing that i like to do every single time is just add the flour into the bowl and again um my sorry whoo shaky camera work uh this is the first time that i've ever done this so you, you are gonna have to bear with me um i am really nervous <laughs> So what I like to do is um, it's four, and I'll keep the recipe down below. So the thing about bread is it's fairly notorious for being finicky, and especially wherever you are. I have a nice clear day. There's relatively little humidity, um, and it's cooler temperature, but it's quite warm in my house. It's about 22 degrees Celsius in my house. So you just add four cups of your bread or all-purpose flour. Uh-oh, we have four cups, ooh, concerning. Two, and then three. Ooh, we are getting down to the dregs of this bag. Three, and four. Oh boy, I need some more. And if you'll notice, the top of this is pretty much flattened out. You can do it with your finger, you can do it with a knife or whatever. Um, I've done this recipe enough that I know what I'm doing, but you wanna flatten it out the first time. The thing about bread is you wanna make sure that you can um, figure, like sort of figure it out yourself. So then, um, just spread it out. You're going to use your hands with this recipe a lot, I find, personally. Um, so what we will do is we will just take our teaspoons. I just need one teaspoon. One teaspoon. And you need two teaspoons of regular old table salt. All right. And then with your hand again, you just mix it into the dough and you wanna mix it really, really well into the dough. And I'm pretty sure, um, I don't know the chemistry behind it, I'm not really super into that, um, but I'm pretty sure the salt just creates um, 
like the air bubbles and the springiness of the bread. Uh, in my bread, I find without the salt, um, it's not the buttery consistency that I like. So yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on my tap, you'll hear it in the background, and I'm going to take my handy dandy little um, cooking thermometer. And mine has Fahrenheit and Celsius, and I think it is currently in Celsius. I need it to be in Fahrenheit. And you want the water between 100 and 110 degrees. And my water is way too hot. And the reason that you don't want it any hotter than that is because you do not want to kill the yeast. So go in and you put two full cups of water. Then from that point, what we do is we're just going to move our flour off to the side. From the point of the water, um, we're going to add our yeast. And so what I like to do is I like to stir in, I like to stir it in with a fork while I'm adding the yeast. So we're just going to stir that in. And so is, as I said, it is two and one quarter teaspoons of yeast to water. And then once you've stirred it in, this helps with the bloom process. So you're just waiting. And sometimes it'll look like murky water and sometimes it will look like um, there's foam or bubbles on top. And I am just mixing mine around so it doesn't all solidify at the bottom. I've got a big chunk of it in here, which is problematic, but I will deal with that when I get to the dough. As I said, this is my first time that I've ever done this. And I, you know, real talk, like this is the first time that I have ever done this um, on film. So if things don't go perfectly, I'm not going to redo it. I'm not wasting my yeast and I'm not wasting my perfectly good bread dough. And as I said, the thing about bread is that you can always get it. So what you want to do, sorry, is you want to let the water sit. Probably, I would give it about two minutes to sit um, and let it bloom. Sometimes it will form at the top and sometimes it won't. If you're looking here right now, you can see that we've got a little bit of the foaminess going on and starting, and that is the yeast blooming. And that is why it is so important that we don't, uh, that we don't um, kill the yeast with hot water. So while we do that, I just like to, you know, put my stuff away. Um, you don't really need any of your tools anymore. You're going to be using your hands. And as I said, bread is very finicky. So the first time you do this recipe, the first time I even did this recipe was, um, I was very strict. I stuck to the recipe exactly. I never let it go any different way. And then um, as I started to learn my area, my oven, which is also a huge thing, um, I learned that uh, you just got to play it by ear depending on what you have in your region, where you are. If you're at a higher altitude, it might need longer to, to cover and bake. So that's um, just it. So we have been, uh, yeah, so it's been about a minute and a half, nearly two minutes. And you can see that, oh, you probably can't, but the yeast has started to bloom a little bit in that water. So from this point on, it's about to get very messy. Be prepared, folks. So what we do is we make a well in the middle of our bread dough. So make a well, a little bit to the bottom. And then what I like to do is I like to make sure that my hand that I'm going to be doing the mixing with, uh, which is my right hand, uh, is very wet. So this is the part that takes a little bit of practice to learn. So first you're going to put your water with your yeast into, into the dough pot. And look, we got rid of that lump and there's almost nothing left in the bottom. And so now we've got the water and you just 
with your wetted hand are starting to mix the flour and the water and the yeast together. And so this is not a clean process. You could do it with a, like, I guess a stand mixer. I don't have one of those. So I just do it with my hands. Um, and I kind of feel, I'm sure people with stand mixers would correct me if I were wrong, but I do feel like you get a feel for the dough when you are doing it with your hands, just because then I can feel if there are lumps, then I can feel if, you know, if there's a big lump of yeast. Um, bless you. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm just working the bowl around. I'm turning it around and I'm bringing the dry flour into the wet dough. Now you have to decide what consistency you want your dough at, but for the purposes of this video, I like a bit of a wetter dough. I don't like a too dry dough and that's only because I've made mistakes with too dry dough before. But if you can see right here, we've still got the flour that's coating it and it's not fully incorporated. And that is just a little bit too, uh, that's a bit too dry. So what I do in that particular situation is just gooey hands and all. I just go and I add one handful of water. Literally, I'm gonna cut my hand, I'm gonna come back and I am going to bring a handful of water into this. Okay, and you only need a little bit of water because you don't want to get this dough too wet. Um, and uh, if you do get it too wet, you can fix that too. All you have to do is add um, a tablespoon of sugar, or sugar, oh my gosh, do not add sugar, a tablespoon of flour, uh, and that should stiffen up your dough and make it a little bit stiffer. So for me, this looks like I added a little bit more water, but I do still have a little bit of flour underneath. And you want the dough to come together and to be coming away from the sides of the bowl like it is now. So this dough is a tiny bit too wet. I made it a tiny bit too wet. So I'm just gonna go into my little flour bag that I've kept close by and add, for me personally, just a pinch more flour and this should do it. Um, yeah and as you can see the dough is now coming off of my hands and that's how you know you've got the moisture right and I just want to feel yeah there's no lumps in the dough but I still do need a little bit more flour I've never made a dough that's been too wet before in my life I like a wetter dough but I've never made a dough that's too wet so there is a first time for everything, folks. And today apparently is that day. Of course, it's the day that I film. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It is still a very wet dough. Wow. I wonder why that is. That's the thing about bread. Bread is tricky. So we're just adding this. I think it's probably less than a tablespoon if we're going to be totally honest about it. Uh, when I'm doing these little pinches by hand. But um, there we go. Now it's looking like it should. You just get a feel for these things. And as I said, I love cooking, so I'm very excited to be able to bring it to you. So now we've got this wet, sticky stuff on our hands. You don't have to, you know, take it off and put it onto the dough, but you can if you want. It'll incorporate in. Um, and I'm just going to wash my hands very quickly. Oh, you get that wonderful ASMR of water in a sink. Are you having fun? Yeah. Okay, so now we're here and my hands are still pretty doughy. It was a rough wash. So now we've got this bowl full of dough. What you wanna do is you want to take a, whoops, a daisy. You wanna take a, um, I typically just go for, what is this called? A drying towel. Um, and I just put it and I cover it and I don't seal it tightly because your dough is going to rise. So I just put it over my dough. It's about 9.30 in the morning my time. So you have to keep it covered until it's doubled in size. So either an hour and a half to two hours. For me personally, oh, in a warm, dry spot. So for me personally, I'm going to cover it with this um, dry dish towel. 
That's the word I'm looking for. Cover it with a, with a dish towel and I will come back to you probably in about an hour and 45 minutes. I'm not gonna leave the video running. It's going to be just a matter of seconds for you. But uh, that's the way that we are going to do it on this video. And when we come back, I will show you how the dough has risen and what it's supposed to look like and then the next steps for this process. It is a long process, I will say, but pretty much the biggest step in the longest part of this, um, and again, it is usually much quicker when I don't film this, but the longest part of this is typically this part, this starting part right here. Okay, so I will see you all soon. And I'm very excited for the next step. So now we take off the oops, the uh, dish towel and you will see that this has literally um, doubled if not quadrupled in size um, and you can see that it's very bubbly and uh, you should be able to put your hand there and bring it away with little residue. Um, so this, this stage is the easiest one. All you need is a spatula. And I just used a rubber-tipped, silicone-tipped, I should say, spatula. It's easiest to clean. So what I do is you take from one side and you bring the batter over to the middle. So I do that all the way around. And I try and get as much off the sides as I can. So what you're doing is you're taking the air out of it again so that you can re-proof it and let it rise. And again, for some reason this time our batter is a little bit, or not our batter, but our dough is a little bit wetter than I'm used to. So we're kind of playing this by ear and how it's going to happen. And that is that is it. So you don't have to do it as many times as I do. You really only have to do it once or twice. But I just do it a little bit more so that I can get the air into it. So as you can see, we're sort of about halfway into my big um, mixing bowl here. And um, we've got a little bit of residue on the spatula, but it's totally fine. And um, what we're going to do is put it back into its warm, dry spot with the uh, dish towel on top of it once again. And that is literally the whole second step. And you're gonna leave it to prove for another hour and 30 to two hours. I am going to do another hour and 45 minutes because that is what works best. Um, works best when I do it. And the next step is a little bit more labor intensive. So um, just be prepared for that. I mean, it's not labor intensive. None of this is labor intensive, but it just takes a little bit more effort. It's um, the messiest step by far. <laughs> and um, the one that you're going to need to get a little bit dirty for. Okay, I will see you then. So next step is you're turning your oven to 450. My oven's being weird. Okay, 450. And then what you're doing is you're taking um, a Dutch oven, any Dutch oven will do, this is a six quart, and you put it in your oven because it has to preheat for the amount of time that your um, dough is resting. So just a sec and we'll be right back for the next step. Okay, so the next step is pretty simple. In another bowl, um, roughly the same size as your first one, um, some people re recommend ceramic or glass. You're just going to put about two tablespoons, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the size of your bowl. Um, of olive oil and I do recommend olive oil for this one and you want to gently just coat around the sides of the bowl and this is going to help it come out a little bit easier whoops sorry uh, and then what you do from that point on is you take a little bit of flour and just sprinkle it in the bowl um, to give it a coating like that so you can set that one off to the side and your next step is the messy step. So, flour generously, flour your counter generously. And then, 
I recommend taking off any jewelry because uh, you get uh, messy doing this. You take your first fold and oh boy, this got too big. And as you can see, mine got too big and it got all over my dishcloth. So my dishcloth is going to need a good wash. I would recommend doing that sooner rather than later. So this has, again, doubled in size. What we're going to do is we're going to take that previous spatula we used and just deflate the air out of it, like so. Oops, sorry guys. And you're deflating the air and getting it into a small ball again. And this will alleviate the need for some of your um, kneading, but not all of it. And then you're going to put this dough, which as I said, mine's very wet. Maybe that's why it rose so much more than it normally does. But put this dough onto your generously floured surface. So now we're on our generously floured surface, as I said. And you're just going to take the dough and you're going to do it sort of by quadrants and fold it in on itself. So get your hands nice and floury. Flour the dough if you want and then take the dough and fold it in on itself to make a sort of ball. Now my dough is a bit sticky and a bit wet, which is a bit disappointing. But um, what it should look like when it is done is something that I don't actually have a picture for, but you need to get the surface tension there. And um, that in a ball is what it would look like. Mine is too wet and it doesn't look like that, but it actually doesn't, you know, it matters, but it, it's not going to um, dramatically alter this recipe. So I am just going to woo, stick it into the bowl that we already olive oiled. And then uh, what you will do after that point is you will um, cover it and let it sit for one hour while your cast iron, um, uh, while your cast iron is cooking uh, in the oven. So we're the, at the end of our hour of our third proof and you can see that the dough has doubled in size again. Mine isn't quite, you can still see there are air bubbles here, but it's not quite as bubbly as it had been before. And that is because um, it, uh, as I said, it's a very moist dough. What I've just done over here is I have taken the uh, Dutch oven, cast iron Dutch oven out of the oven. You can see it's not the same red color as it went in. It's very, very, very hot. You always have to use um, gloves for anything. So what we're going to do now, uh, there are two ways you can do this. If you were a little extra, you could... Um, take this you could put it on another floured surface and create that surface tension again within it i'm not extra i'm not that person so what i am going to do whoops <laughs> is just take my little rubber spatula like i was showing you guys before and i am just going to show you okay so what i'm doing is i'm taking my spatula and you can see because of the olive oil, it's coming away from the edges of this wall very easily. So again, I'm taking out that it, those air bubbles in the middle and I'm moving it towards the center. And you can see it's already bigger dough than we originally had. So now you've created that surface tension in here, as you can see on this side. You can either, as I said, pick it up with your hands, create a ball and create that surface tension. Or if you're like me and you just sort of wing these type of things, you're just going to put it directly into the Dutch oven. What I would recommend at this point, if you have a bread slicer, do that. But if not, you're just going to take a knife and do two or three cuts down the middle um, just so that it has some air pockets and it does a bit more of a rise. And then you have to put the lid back on that is very very important open your oven and then it's going to cook for an hour but at 45 minutes you're going to stop it and you are going to um take the lid off so the last 15 minutes they can get that beautiful brownness on top but i will show you in the next part so now we have our completed bread it's been in the oven for me for about 16 and a bit minutes and you can see how it's beautifully browned 
on the top. It's still in the cast iron pan. Um, you can leave it in here to cool. However, what I would recommend is taking it out and putting it onto a cooling rack. Um, it, you could put it directly onto a cutting board and I would recommend a wooden cutting board. But the thing about putting it onto a cutting board is the bottom uh, retains its moisture. So you really want it to dry off. So admittedly, I'm not super duper thrilled with this bread. Um, I guess it was a little bit too moist, but that's the problem with bread baking. You really have to get a feel for it. And that's why you use the recipe, which I am going to link below. Um, I am, you know, that's why you follow it the first time and sort of finicky and do it your own way once you figure it out. Um, and that's sort of how it goes with bread as well. But this is my bread. It has gained a little bit of height. It's on its cooling rack right now. And uh, you can just tap a bread on the bottom. It should have a faintly hollow sound just to make it, um, just to make it sound good. Now, what you really want to listen for is with the silence right now, you can hear the, the, the TV, the news on in the background for my <laughs> child um, while I'm doing this. Um, essentially, you just want to hear it crackling because it's still continuing to cook. And that is really why you want that cooling rack so that the bottom of the bread uh, can cook and finish. So that is our completed Dutch oven bread. I really hope you enjoyed this cook with me. If you did, please feel free to give me a like and a subscribe. And if you didn't, you don't have to return to my channel. Uh, I really hope that you have a wonderful day and I hope that you are all staying safe and well. Toodles!